Good morning. And welcome to worship. So good to see you this morning. So good to see a little sun this morning. Doesn't that make a difference? Although I was talking to some friends who um, farm, and I was complaining about the rain. And they quickly put me into, into perspective how much needed this rain has been. And, and, and I knew that too, but uh, it is good to see a little sun as well. But mostly today, it is good to see all of you here in worship, and it's good to have our folks join us online and radio and community access. We do not take your presence, we do not take the fact that you're watching or listening for granted. We're beginning a new sermon series today. It's entitled, Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. Easter changed everything. And we'll discover this morning in our, in our gospel, Jesus joins these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and they don't recognize him at first. It's kind of interesting. But over time, they begin to see who Jesus is and see again, really, for the first time. And that happens for us over and over again. Jesus comes among us in new ways. And so we're looking forward to how we might see Jesus in new ways over these next six weeks. For those in person with us today, uh, thank you for wearing masks. Thank you for distancing. As we've said, we follow these protocols not just for ourselves, but we follow them for the care and the well-being of each other. And that's utmost of, of utmost importance for us here at first. Um, if by chance you brought along an offering, uh, you can drop those off. There's offering boxes out in the gathering space as you leave, and, and we're so grateful for that gift and support. Um, some of you may know our our preacher for today. Others may not. And so I'd like to introduce Sharon Bridges. Sharon is a member here at first, and uh, Sharon's also a student at Luther Seminary. Uh, you've been there for a year and a half. You know, I say been there. You really haven't been there. You have been, <laughs> you have been remote in learning. And so uh, some of you, there's another connection also with Sharon. Sharon is the daughter of Darlene Barteltberger. And so um, it's always good to know those connections, but so good to have you here. Thanks, Sharon, for being here this morning. We're grateful as well for our worship team. Uh, we do not take these folks for granted. And this morning, they are Jeff Lindu, Gary Johnson, Carolyn Giannoni, Nicole Barnett, and Randy Morkin. This morning, we worship as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Thank you. 
Um, I think I detect some faces I have not seen before or some faces I'm not as familiar with. And so for those who are guests today, I welcome you. So good to have you with you with us. And uh, for those maybe watching for the first time today, we welcome you as well. We're going to take some moments to share words of confession and forgiveness. But as we begin... Uh, we'll have a call and response, just as we did on, do on Easter Sunday. Would you join me? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. And then refreshed by that resurrection life that we share in Christ, we, we come to this time of confession and hear these words of forgiveness, grateful for the gift of baptism and Christ's promises in our lives. And so we're going to pause for just a moment of, of silent reflection, and then we'll confess together. Please join me. We thank you, risen Christ, for making us new and leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. Forgive us for the good we have failed to do and the wrong we have done. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ, Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. People of God, do not dwell on your wounds any longer. For Christ has risen to heal you. He has risen to forgive you. He is risen to change us all and bind us together. He is risen to make you and all things new. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray together the prayer of the day. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for raising your son, Jesus, to bring new life to our world. Help us to remember that you are with us on our walk here on earth, blessing us through the Holy Spirit and showing us opportunities for new life and joy each day. Amen. For those who are online, uh, I invite you to gather the, the kiddos around if they are not with you already. And uh, for any of you kids in worship this morning, um, if you can't see Sharon, be sure to stand on your chair carefully and maybe help have mom and dad help you with that. Um, but it is children's time with Sharon. <laughs> morning oh, to all the children and all the families. I'm so happy you can be with us today on in person and online. Uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about what it is like to walk with Jesus. 
So walking with Jesus means that Jesus is with us down in our heart, okay? And that makes us feel happy and safe and like we belong. So another word for happy is joy. So we can have, we can feel joy when Jesus is with us. I have, I love to sing. And I have um, a favorite song about Jesus in my heart. And the worship band today is going to help me sing it. But I need some uh, audience participation here. So when I point to you all, I want you to say where. So let's practice. Okay, ready? Where. Perfect. Okay. So the band is going to help us sing, and I'll point to you when it's your turn to help us out. Okay. The joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to sing. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. helping us with this today and remember that Jesus walks with you wherever you go and brings you joy. Amen. Good morning. I'm Jeff Carlson and I'd like you to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place during these days? He asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have taken place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body there. They came back and told us that they had indeed indeed seen a vision of an angel who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now all nearly over. So he went to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, 
and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This call and response gives me such hope and joy each time we say it. We are just one week past Easter, and for most of us, it is back to our normal schedules. But for a while, we are going to revisit what it might mean to meet Jesus again for the first time. In the gospel lesson today, Cleopas and his friend, who were followers of Jesus, were leaving Jerusalem, heading to Emmaus, on the third day following Jesus' death on the cross. It was about a seven-mile journey to Emmaus, and it was a dirt road with deep ruts. Not the paved type of road that the Romans had built for the trade routes by the Great Sea or on the King's Highway east of the Dead Sea. The Romans knew how to build a road that would last for centuries, but this was just a dirt road, maybe similar to what we would call a minimum maintenance road. So picture two men in sandals walking along this minimum maintenance road. The two men were deep in conversation. So much had happened so quickly in one week. Their teacher, Jesus, went from the jubilant procession with all the people shouting, Hosanna, to being unjustly tried and crucified on the hill of Calvary. They had lost hope for the future when Jesus died. And now they heard his tomb was empty. They were sad and confused and maybe a little scared. These men were so deep in conversation that they didn't notice a man with them on the road. The man asked them, what are you discussing? They stood still and were sad. Cleopas said to the man, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there the last few days? The stranger said, what things? Now, we know that this stranger is Jesus, but the scripture says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. There must have been nothing about this person that seemed different to Cleopas and his friend. The risen Jesus must have looked like to them an ordinary man. We know that he was risen from the dead, but Jesus must have had a substantial body. Jesus wasn't a ghost or an angelic figure in white, but just a guy walking on the road to Emmaus. Cleopas described all the things that had happened in Jerusalem to Jesus over the last week. The stranger on the road with them said, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. I can just picture Jesus with his shaking his head or maybe holding his head in his hands. Jesus had suffered, died, and rose from the grave. And his followers still didn't understand what it all meant. Jesus had told them plainly about what would happen, but because it isn't what they expected or wanted, they weren't ready when it happened. So again, Jesus is patient with them. And unknown to them, except as the stranger on the road, he teaches them again from the Old Testament the prophecies of the Messiah. It says he interpreted for them from Moses all the way through the prophets. Jesus gave them insight into the Old Testament that they would have never had before. Insight that the Messiah was not a king like King David to overthrow their earthly enemies, 
but the Son of God coming to give new life. This was not just for the Jews, but for the entire world. Jesus might have quoted from Isaiah 49, 6, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. The men on the road couldn't see the big picture of salvation for the world. How often do we miss the big picture as well? We understand Jesus as our personal savior, but do we understand Jesus as the light to the nations? How do we as followers of Jesus respond? Are we confused like the followers on the road as to why Jesus was here? In the story, the three men continue down the road. Jesus is, discussing, is teaching and they are discussing these ideas that are new to them. It is getting late and they reach Emmaus. But the stranger acts like he is going to continue on in the dark. Cleopas and his friend invite Jesus, the stranger, to stay with them. Now, this is something that the Jews were commanded to do by God. They are to take care of the stranger in their midst and show hospitality. The text specifically says that it was getting dark and they strongly urged him to stay. What might have happened if they hadn't offered hospitality? Would have it ever been revealed to them that this truly was the risen Jesus they had been walking with? It makes me think about what we might be missing when we don't invite the stranger. What could happen if we show hospitality? If we go out of our comfort zone to welcome someone who is a stranger to us? What might happen if we are open to getting to know others that aren't usually in our group? Could they help us understand something we are missing? Might we meet Jesus? I had the opportunity to go to Northwest Kenya two and a half years ago on a mission experience at a, um, visiting Daylight Center and school. Daylight School started um, 12 years ago for orphan tribal children who are without families due to tribal warfare. The point of the trip was for us to get a better understanding of their culture and what their needs were. I want to tell you just one little embarrassing story that happened to me when I was there. Um, I was with a group of sixth grade um, children and we were talking about gardens and they found out that I love to garden. And so they were so excited to share their garden with me. Now, I had on a long skirt, which was what we did because that was more culturally appropriate for where we were. Shorts would have been a better idea, but a long skirt is what I had on. I came out to their garden and it was surrounded by barbed wire. And I had a long skirt on. And I'm trying to figure out how I am going to get over this barbed wire and not completely embarrass myself. But the children came to my rescue and with, with big, huge smiles on their faces, but without laughing, helped me over the barbed wire so that they could show me their garden. This is one of the ways that that group showed me hospitality. One thing I came away with was the amazing attitude of hospitality they have. They greeted us with joy and we became part of their community. They have very little in material possessions, but they have great joy. Their joy and faith in Jesus is contagious. They shared Jesus with me. So Jesus accepted the offered hospitality by the men on the road and came to their house to stay. He took the bread, blessed it, and broke it. Their eyes were opened. The Holy Spirit gave them the understanding of who they were with, and Jesus vanished from their midst. They understood. The risen Jesus had been walking with them. The misunderstanding of who Jesus really was was over for them. They had been with the risen Messiah. Joy overtook them, and they ran back in the dark to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. Their sadness on the road had been turned to joy by the risen Christ. 
in the recognition of Jesus, they also realized that as they had spent time with the stranger on the road, they had felt something different, a burning in their hearts. Were not our hearts burning within us when he was talking to us on the road, they said. Something was different about the stranger, but they didn't recognize what it was. They felt a presence in their hearts, but it wasn't yet revealed. Could the Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to us as well? Ezekiel chapter 36 says, referring to the Holy Spirit, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. 1 Samuel 10, 6 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you shall prophesy with them and be changed into another man. Could this mean that the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus to us when we are ready to receive it? That would mean that it is not something that we do, but it is something God does. We cannot earn the right to have the Holy Spirit. It is given to us in baptism. And our baptism is new in us every day. That would mean the Holy Spirit is new in us every day. The walk with Jesus is new every day. Are we able to recognize the burning in our hearts? Do we have joy in the walk? God is walking with us. But where do we see God in our daily walk? I am a musical theater fan. And when I thought about this scripture, the song, You'll Never Walk Alone, from the musical Carousel, came to mind. When I researched it, I found out that this song has been around since 1945. But recently, it became an anthem, both in the United Kingdom and in Europe, for the support of the medical staff and first responders that are the frontline workers in the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I'm not going to sing it, but I, will, I am going to recite the lyrics for you. When you walk through the storm, keep your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you will never walk alone. Cleopas and his friend were not walking alone on the way to Emmaus. They just had no idea of who they were walking with, with Jesus. The realization that it was Lord brought their Lord brought them unspeakable joy. We too can have that joy that we walk with Jesus. Let us look to the burning in our hearts that the Holy Spirit gives us each new day to find the joy that walking with Jesus can bring. Amen.
I invite you to stand with me, and if you're at home today, would you stand with us as well as we confess our faith, and today we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our music team will will sing our prayer song as we go into our time of prayer. as as you walked alongside your disciples, walk with us through, through these days. Give us the faith that we need to face whatever obstacles might be in our way today and in the coming weeks. Continue to open our eyes and our hearts to you. We ask this morning that you'd comfort those who are sick, that you'd care for those who are suffering and alone, Be at work healing and giving strength to to all who are in need. We pray for those that we know with particular needs, including Ben Cook, Pete Golden, Emmett Oween, Lisa Colon, Brian Stock, Holly McAdams, Cindy Hughes, Tracy Berglund, Jeff Gunther, Patty Knutson, Ken Robinson, Nicole Apodaca, Chris Peterson, Lyle Nelson, Chuck Pennard, and Path Paxton Wewick. Lord, we ask that you'd care for Blair and Andrea George on the death of Blair's dad, Mike George. Support each one with your mercy as well as, as those we now name in our hearts. Lord, be at work in those homes and families that, that these days may be disrupted by anger or wherever relationships are strained. Bring healing and help us to see you in that healing. Help us to see you in new ways that we might all continue to grow in our faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. While we don't uh, receive the offering in, in the same way we have in the past by literally passing a plate, we, we do take time each week to talk about our ministry and to give thanks. Um, we are blessed to have two members at First Lutheran who are enrolled at seminary at this time, uh, Sharon Bridges, who just preached with us, and Katie Hassler. Their, their uh, pictures are on the screen right now. Both of these 
Women are students at Luther Seminary, and it's, it's been so great to see how God is using them and the path that God is opening up for them and to, and to imagine together what their future might be. Today, I believe this is true, is the first time Sharon's ever preached to a congregation. And I don't know about you, Sharon, but the first time I did that, my knees were wobbling. I didn't see any wobbling, but mine were. And each of these are such important steps, and I'm just so proud of these two, two women from our congregation. You know, we need solid leaders in the church um, now more than ever. And so our encouragement is so important, and our prayer and our financial support uh, for Sharon and Katie are just absolutely essential. And so um, over these past years, I've been amazed at how God is at work at First Lutheran. We have other young people who are, are coming up. Um, I think for Sharon, you know, at the end of your career as a physical therapist, I mean, even before that, you, you started seeing God open some doors. Just think of the courage for Sharon to go back to seminary at, the, at this point in her life. Katie is at a different place. Where are you? Maybe God is, maybe you're seeing Jesus in new ways, and maybe Jesus is opening doors for you. We never take for granted what God might be doing in this congregation. And so let's continue to pray for each other. Let's continue to support these uh, women in our congregation in this way. And let me just say thanks to each one of you for making our ministry possible. Let's pray together our offering prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you the spirit of wisdom, to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. May the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Well, as we close, let me share just a, a couple of, of things of gratitude and a couple of announcements. This morning's radio broadcast is given by Tom, Tom and Nancy Grotjohn in honor of Christine and Jonathan Bakewitz's first anniversary, which is on April 12th. And today's live stream is sponsored by Diane Ness, and it's given in memory of Dan Ness, and we're so thankful for those gifts. A bit later this morning, we are going to celebrate Jetson Hintermeister's baptism. His parents are Trent and Lindsay Hintermeister, and Trent and Lindsay know that we continue to pray and support you in that important role and calling of being parents. We are now offering uh, in-person worship both Wednesday evenings at 6.15 and Sunday mornings at 8.30. You do need to pre-register. All of you folks here know that, but maybe those who are watching don't know and one thing we always say is, is that um, people should not feel any urgency to come. If you feel a little bit reluctant about doing that, that's fine. We're all at different places, and it's okay. But know that when you do come, we do practice 
uh, protocols that should keep you and all of us safe. We're looking for someone to serve as a wedding coordinator. We've not ever had that before here at first. Um, but this person would provide uh, some direction, support, um, and hospitality for the bride and groom uh, in coming up, getting ready for the wedding, the day of the wedding, uh, help, help with uh, the wedding party and the families. If you'd like to learn more about that, um, you could go to our website um, for more information. You can also check out today's e-news. Um, the e-news is always your best way to find out what's going on at First Lutheran. And if you aren't receiving it, just call the church office and be sure to sign up. Again, thank you so much for being here. Whether you're here physically, we believe that we just come together and somehow God's Spirit, just as as uh, Sharon just said so well, God's Spirit just comes among us and brings us together and moves us forward. So now go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our closing song today is I Love to Tell the Story. story